Next, I'd like to introduce Chief of the City of Miami Police, Chief Kalina. And last but certainly not, not least, one of the visionaries of Miami development and the unofficial mayor of Wynwood, Mr. Moshe Manor. I'm the first mayor of Miami in the entire history of the city, 123 years, that was actually born in the city of Miami. So I grew up here seeing success and failures of neighborhoods. Uh, I saw, I grew up in South Beach, you know, when, when uh, South Beach, uh, when Washington Avenue had how many clubs, Lewis, did it have back then? 30, 40, 105. And I also saw how a city could cripple a neighborhood like South Beach as well. Um, you know, I saw, I was, uh, I just gotten on the commission before they ruled back the alcohol sales uh, in Coconut Grove and saw, you know, the consequence of that in the Grove as well. So for me, you know, this is a neighborhood that uh, really came out of, it's like the Phoenix, it came out of nothing, it came out of the ashes. Uh, it's a neighborhood that uh, was an industrial neighborhood, it was an impoverished neighborhood, and because of many visionaries, um, it has transformed itself into one of the most exciting neighborhoods, not only in the United States, but in the planet. Um, I think it's the most uh, Instagrammed or Googled uh, neighborhood uh, in the United States or in the planet. So um, that's something we wanna preserve as a city. We wanna make sure that we are able to find that balance, that delicate balance between understanding that uh, Wynwood is a place where thousands of people congregate um, and they congregate for a variety of different reasons to a place now that's being populated by residents. We're now seeing residential towers and we're also going to be seeing office towers as well. So um, what we've seen happen, unfortunately, in other parts of the city, and we, you know, I remember when Lewis used to own space and uh, I used to tell him, don't ever kill the goose that laid the golden egg because in his particular case, he had a 24 hour liquor license um, in an entertainment district. Um, and but it came into conflict at times with um, with the residents, and clearly the main issue is noise. I mean that's always the issue. And and whenever anybody comes to meet with me to talk about uh, creating a new and creative venue, I always tell them you've got to be really conscientious of the noise because at the end of the day we respond to our residents, and that's something that um, they're our bosses, right? They're the ones that vote us in or out of office, and so uh, that's a balance that we have to try to carefully. Um, balance uh, and I know that there's been a lot of discussion about our noise ordinance there's a lot of discussion with how much how late you can make noise and I think those are things that we should come together as a community and have a consensus so that we can go forward and make sure that this neighborhood that so many visionaries including uh, uh, Moisha and, and, and the Goldman's and people like uh, um, Albert Garcia that came that were here even before then I mean so many people make this and really all the people who are here in the audience are will make uh, this neighborhood great. Uh, those that, that, that come here on a day-to-day -day basis come here on the weekends. We've had a major events here without any major incidents, thank the good Lord. And I want to thank also our police department, our chief who's here, our city manager who will be coming, um, or who is here, there he is. Um, I really want to thank them because we're all stewards of this. And I think if we all work together, if we compromise and if we talk and we have dialogue, I really do feel that Winwood can continue to grow and progress in the way that it has and that it should for our city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, while we're on that side, uh, Mr. Chairman, it, this is your district, and, and obviously you probably have strong opinions about Wynwood. Obviously you've overseen a lot of the, the um, revitalization and, and continued growth that has occurred. So why don't you share with us your, your vision for, for the neighborhood? The first thing that we want to consider about Wynwood is, is where it was. Right, and then where it is today and what's, where it's going in the future. Uh, the first thing I think we have to all realize is that Wynwood, in a way, is a creature of its own making. I mean, this is a space that no matter where you're from, people are coming to. People are choosing to come to Wynwood versus going to Miami Beach. And I think that's a very important conversation that we have to have in, in Miami because we have to be able to continue to attract visitors to our spaces. This is how the businesses that are here and that are coming will continue to survive. And, and it's important to, to, to differentiate 
us and Miami Beach in that because we are in direct a direct competition with what's happening across the uh, across the water, and we know that there are a lot of things going on in, my, in Miami Beach right now where they're rolling back hours of alcohol sales and making it very unpleasant for people to be there. Now I say that to say that in Miami, you know, we have to be very careful about what we do in killing the tourism that comes here. But I, I also think that this conversation is truly about the difference between noise and sound. Right, so noise is something that is plain, that's, that's audible to someone. When, when the vibrations hit the air, you can hear it. We can hear the construction. We hear, we hear that right now. The question is, is that noise? Is it violence above our noise ordinance? Noise is to, uh, that sound. Noise is something that, you, not just that it's the vibrations in the air, but then it causes, it's, un, it's unpleasant. So something that is unpleasant that you're hearing, such as a pig squilling. If you hear a pig squilling at all hours of the night, most people would agree that that sound is unpleasant and no one wants to hear it. And so, you know, this conversation comes about many times. If you're a parent, your child's music that you may hear is noise, but they hear it as a great sound. They love it, they dance to it. Um, children may hear, uh, they may hear classical music and think that it is noise. But to you, it's, it's, it's wonderful music. And so the reason I bring that up is because I, I do believe that the city of Miami is behind in how it characterizes what is noise. I think the city of Miami is behind in how it differentiates in what areas that noise is of concern. Obviously, anywhere that someone lives, um, there is going to be this, this battle between what is noise and what is sound and what is acceptable. And many people will tell you that the, just the, the, the decibel amount of being near a highway or hearing cabs or honking horns or uh, just the average day to day of a downtown, for instance, area, it causes much more noise than does the playing of music at a special event. The difference though is that you know, one is the hustle and bustle of the city and the other is they believe to be man-made or cause and causes a concern. And so when I think about a space like Wynwood, and it makes me think about that this is a space where especially we have to get a hold of what is noise versus what is sound. And that's the big, that's the first thought process that we have to have right in a space like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll think that it's evident and I agree with Commissioner Hardiman, by the way, that um, a, a lot of the code is in fact archaic and, and that's just the truth. And the city has to do a better job. And I know that it's difficult, but I think the city has to do a better job in adjusting the code to fit to different parts of the city. We're a big city, we, we like to call ourselves a global city. Uh, but, but sometimes we are a little bit behind the times in how we adjust our laws. And so I, I think what has to happen is the legislators need to come together along with our city managers, certainly with me, with uh, building, with zoning, and, and understand what fits in each neighborhood. And, and I know that that may be complicated, but nonetheless, I think that's what we have to do because every neighborhood is different. And I can tell you that I, I worked this neighborhood. I was a rookie policeman here in Wynwood from 1990 to 1993, I worked right here. And I saw what this neighborhood was and I see what this neighborhood is now. And this is a wonderful neighborhood that attracts people from all over the world. It is at a very inclusive neighborhood, which I think is what Miami should be all about. We see examples of other cities uh, not just in Florida, but across the country that don't have that attitude. Uh, you know, we're very open here and we want everyone to come to the city of Miami and we want Miami to continue to grow. The city has been growing the last couple years and we certainly don't want to get in the way of that growth. And so sometimes I feel it is a little bit unfair. A lot of times when people don't know what to do, they kind of put it on the police. If it's an issue with the homeless, uh, well, let's put it on the police. If it's a, an issue that deals with noise, well, let's put it on the police. We're not going to run from any of that. You know, sometimes we have to be the ones that make the decisions. And sometimes those decisions are popular and sometimes they're not. We're not going to run from them. I think what we need to do here, and I mentioned it earlier when I met with, uh, with the Winwood Bit, when I went to their meeting this morning. Ultimately, I think everybody needs to recognize that it would be an absolute shame that if we don't find some way to have consensus to make sure that this neighborhood remains the vibrant, inclusive, accepting neighborhood that it is, that would be a shame. And I think that everyone would uh, be saddened by that. Thank you, Chief. So, Mr. Manning, um, sir, if you could hear me. Mr. Manning, you've been a supporter of Save Winwood 
since we launched the campaign, and thank you for that, for that support. So many people think of Wynwood as an arts and entertainment district, uh, but you know, a lot of our campaign has been about the fact that the law hasn't, as the chief said, caught up with that. So if you could just explain for the people that might not be aware, you know, why can't Wynwood be what it needs to be with the laws that are on the books, and what needs to change, in your opinion? Okay. Okay, thank you everybody for coming in here. I really appreciate it. Because I feel like now we're facing like, this is a historic moment. Are they, we're gonna save Wynwood or we're not? So I really want to thank you, Mayor, to come here, Commissioner Keon, and, and the Chief Police. Thank you so much for, you know, for coming in here. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody you know, coming in here. So the story is that some people like to confuse the issue why did we create the Save, the Save Winwood movement? It's not about the marketplace. It has nothing to do with the marketplace. I just want to make it clear. It's not about the TUP. Yes, it started it when it started. The Arab Spring started with some vendor was that to put himself on fire because they had closed his, his uh, cut down. They shut it down, so the whole Arab Spring started. But it's not because of the guy, of the guy, because they shut down the cart. This was the one that just started it, and it's really kind of waking me up. It's really got me to think about Winwood and about all my experiences in the past, what I have done, how I achieved, why I came to Winwood, why did I buy 45 acres, my purpose here in Miami, my goals in Miami, what I want to achieve, what I want to get done. Time is running out and we need to really step it up. So when I came to, I've done many projects in my life, businesses, I built buildings, ecosystems. I was involved in many development. One of them was the meatpacking. And I saw how it really works, how the system works. I was in South Beach. Sometimes I pay for the bottles also for the South Beach bottles, expensive ones. And I've seen people standing on the door, by the door, and checking people by the watch, by the shoes, who can come, who cannot come. And so when I came to Winwood, just this is after Goldman made his soul rest in peace, that he put, he laid the ground, you know, the, the, the ground for Miami to, to become an entertainment hub. And I came and said, we're gonna build the cultural, infrastructure hub of Miami that Miami needs so desperately in Wynwood. Shutting down the marketplace, he just woke me up and said, Moish, wait a minute, we're starting here another slow death of, another, of this neighborhood. Everywhere I go in the world, everybody knows Wynwood. This is a national treasure. And Miami doesn't have entertainment hub. It doesn't have it because every time we have it, they blow it up. Every time we have it, they come in putting a middle, in, middle of the, in the middle of the playground and say, now you guys have to go home. So we have a developer here next to us that he put his building in the middle, he built it so cheap, and then he wants me to shut it down the music at 11 o'clock. He wants the people to shut down everything at 11 o'clock. So I'm here to speak in the name of the entire neighborhood, the name of Miami, the name of South Florida. We need to save this neighborhood before we get on the, on the march to our death. So when I put myself against the Winwood beat, I say, I'd rather die on the operation table than I bleed to death. This is it. People don't know. People, they're going to think you're going after the beat. And, you know, and some people hiding. They're hiding because they're afraid to say, yes, we have problems. And they have big problems. They get visited nightly by the police. But some of them chose to duck down let us win. After the war, we come out and we kiss and hug. So, so Mr. Mayor, Mr. So Man. I'm coming. To, I mean, you know, I'm coming forward. So the vision is: we want to protect Greenwood. We want to make it entertainment hub. We want to 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 change the uh, the the noise uh, rules that we have until now that they are inadequate. Because Miami is about being outdoor. Let the people walk. Let the people enjoy the music outside. It's fun. We got all the colors and all the people can afford, people who cannot afford, let them come, let them enjoy it. Go build residential somewhere else. 
Miami, one of the lowest occupancy rate that we have in, in America. Why do you need to come to the middle of the party? Why? Let us leave. Let us build in the temple. Let us let us have entertainment hub that we can we can have comedy clubs. We can have theater. Let them build on top of it. The vision is to have commercial, to have entertainment with commercial. It goes very very well. You don't need to do every time residential. Enough is enough is enough. And that's why I stood up. I said, this is it. Now or never. So, so Ms. Mr. Mayor, I, I want to be clear here because a, a lot of people are paying attention. I want to be clear. For the residential that's already here, is there a way for that to coexist with, with Wynwood as an arts and entertainment district? Do you think that people moved here for that? Do you think that people knew what they were getting themselves into or, or what? Okay, first of all, I'm really sorry because people who move to this neighborhood, they need to know where they're coming in. They need to know they're coming to the middle of the party, to the to art entertainment area where there is music at night. People must know it. Beside it, if a developer wants to build residential, God bless, make better windows, make better walls, make better construction. And don't, and don't, and don't come to this neighborhood after everything we did, all the hard work for the last 10, 12 years that we have put in here, put your building in the middle, you know, build it, fill it, and then sell it to the hedge funds and let us deal with the tenant over here. So yes, it can exist, but they have to understand that we want to party after 11 o'clock. We want, we want a place where we can hear the music. Commissioner Key on your right, the difference between noise and music. The problem with this building, even if we go down the street, you can hear people walking down the street. What are they gonna tell the buses? Don't drive by. Thank you, Mr. Mena, for your very honest uh, Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, obviously this is a city that has a lot of opinions and a lot of interested parties. And, uh, you know, obviously developers play a certain role and arts and entertainment plays a certain role. And uh, there's obviously a balancing act, especially that our public officials have, have to strike. And we understand that. So um, what, what I love, just from some perspective, because you've been in government a long time, I'm sure you've seen more difficult situations than this. In, in your opinion, what does a path forward look like from the people who feel very strongly that Wynwood's identity as an arts and entertainment district should be protected, and also that there are some residential developments already approved? What, what does a way forward look like for that balance? Well, I think we have to get together. I think we all have to come together. There has to be some compromise. Um, I, I do agree that, uh, and I have always agreed that, you know, if, if you live in a certain area, you should expect uh, what the area has, right? You, you decided you wanted to rent there or buy there. There are certain things that come with, the, with that area. Um, obviously, you're not living in the suburbs if you come and to live in Wynwood, right? I mean, that's pretty clear. Um, when we approved the NRT and we approved the, the MANA SAP, both things that approved uh, by me as a commissioner, we anticipated that there would be residential, commercial, you know, that, that Wynwood was going to continue to evolve. And what, what you can anticipate is where will the tension points come from? And obviously, naturally, as the, the, the neighborhood has grown and progressed as fast as it has, which is a great thing, um, we have seen those tension points. And I think we now have to, I think we have to change a variety of things. I think we have to look at, and I think the chairman talked about it, we have to really look at our noise, noise ordinance, right? Because ambient noise, I mean, we're sitting here, we can hear a ton of ambient noise, right? And that is something that has to be differentiated from the noise that is produced from a particular place. Uh, we already do that with festivals like Ultra. Um, and so, as you know, and so uh, that gives you a very objective standard where you know how to comply or how not to comply. I think it's very frustrating for a business owner when they don't know what they can do to comply with the law. And so I think that is very frustrating. Um, and so I think we have to deal with that, with that issue. Um, I also think that, you know, again, we have to have a com conversation about the future because I suspect based on the NRD and based on the, the uh, SAP that there will continue to be more residents in this area. You know, and so I think we have to figure out what they're going to be willing to tolerate and what's reasonable for them to tolerate and then come together. But I think I've seen, you know, and, and I will agree with something that Moisha said, you know, I, I've seen 
uh, emails from residents of developer, you know, residents of this area, some that complain, but I've also seen emails of people that say, no, no, this is what we want. You know, this is what we, yeah. this is what we rented for, right? So I've seen both uh, kinds of, of, I have, and, and, and so, uh, and that happens. Uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with a variety of things right now and, and we, we get both sides of that argument. So I think it's incumbent on us to listen. First of all, we're here to listen and we were here um, to get both sides of the story. You know, as, as the chief said, I went earlier to the meeting as well. I went to the other meeting of the bid the last time and I'm willing to do whatever I have to do and work as long as I have to work and spend as much time as I have to and I'm sure the chairman agrees until we get it right. Uh, because at the end of the day, what I think people expect from government is to know what the rules are so that everyone can play by the rules, but the rules have to be fair and they have to be standardized so that if you if you buy a business or you start a business, uh, you know what you're getting yourself into. And, and, and you know, I'm blessed to have friendships and relationships with many, many of the business owners here. Um, they've supported me from way before um, I ran for mayor as a, as a councilman. And, and I've been able to vote on, on, on a lot of the rules and regulations that made help make Wynwood what it is today. And I'm very proud of it. Frankly, I come here and every single time that I come to Wynwood, every single time that I come to Wynwood, there's something new. Every single time. There's a new uh, development, you know, internal build out. There's something new happening. And that is something special, frankly. And we have to preserve that. We have to continue to allow that to grow. Our city's doing phenomenally well. We grew 10.5% last year, 8.5% uh, my first year as mayor. We had the lowest homicide rate. Everyone talks about, you know, the noise and the partying and all that, but I had to focus on the homicide rate, right? We had the lowest homicide rate my first year as mayor in 51 years. So I, I frankly would rather people be partying than hurting each other. So that, that's, that's something that I, I certainly prefer. And, and the second year, we went down to 55 year low in homicides. And I think that is a testament to the way our city is growing. If our city wasn't working well, those numbers would not be right. And so I think that's a testament to what we've created here in the city and in this neighborhood as well. Wow. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I'd like to, the next question, I'd like to talk about some local local government things. Uh, so, so Mr. Chairman, did, so this would be best for you. Um, the, the Wynwood Business Improvement District is a body for, for this area. And, and they've done some incredible things since its inception. I think everybody would agree. And um, one of the questions I've, heard a lot from the course of doing this campaign and, and launching this petition is people not really understanding how that body works. You know, it, it's elected by pieces of property, not by people. The property folio gets one vote and so on and so forth. Uh, what do you say to people who are afraid that without owning property, they don't feel like the body for the neighborhood properly represents them? That's a pretty good question. Obviously, back in the day, um, you had to be white and a property owner to vote. If people remember this. And, uh, and and we determined as a community, as a nation, that that wasn't the way that we should move forward. Lots of people were enfranchised through that process. And, um, and, and, and what I don't want to do is have people confuse the right to vote, you know, for the government, of your choosing versus something like a business improvement district. Business improvement districts are not new. Uh, we have some in the city of Miami. Uh, to mine, I can think of three. And, and many of them are created differently. I believe the one in Coconut Grove, for instance, you have a commissioner that sits on the actual bid board. And here, we don't, we don't have that. And the, one of the things that I've noticed about the bid is that, I mean, it's obvious that they do some good things. They help attract people into the space. They help provide security for the area. They spend money on on um, on keeping the streets clean, etc. There, so there are things that I believe that the bid does that make perfect sense for an area, and it's responsible as property owners for us to say, look, this area needs a lot of assistance, and we're willing to put forth the effort and our resources to make uh, the area better than what it is today, more than what the city ordinarily can give you. But I also think that there are times that you have to kind of scale back on it. So, for instance, um, and I have many friends that are part of the bid, etc. But the bid has made requests to, in, in the past, to 
to be the decision makers on who, who was able to have the festivals in the streets in the beat area. Right? And, and I personally thought that that was a big overstep in the boundaries because I believe that the public streets belong to the people. And so there are entities that may not be able to have an event in the street of the community if another board besides the city of Miami was the decision maker behind that. And you know, many people I think have good intentions with this because the bid board could see it as, listen, we have people that come take advantage of what we've created in this space. And when they leave, it's not in a better condition than it was when they came. And so, you know, they feel some sort of responsibility for making it better. And I can understand that. But I think what happens is, you know, sometimes you have, sometimes you have good law and you have poor enforcement. Sometimes you have bad law and you have perfect enforcement. And so what I don't want to see is something that happens in our community is essentially bad law with perfect enforcement. And I think that what's interesting about like when you travel back to the whole definition of noise and excessive unnecessary noise, which is what our noise ordinance speaks to, now you have a police officer who's enforcing it. So, you know, to think of that, you know, you, I, I'm a criminal defense attorney. And, and, and I, I personally believe that you don't beat police officers on the street. That's just not where it happens. They rule the street. You win in the courtroom. And there's some things that what happens with police officers that you will always lose on. And perception is one of them. And so, for instance, if I looked out at the crowd and I said, man, those are really nice dark gray save Winwood shirts. Unfortunately, they're illegal in the city of Miami. You can only wear black, say, Wynwood shirts. Now, you wearing the shirt will say, well, this is black. He's gonna say, it's great, put your hands behind your back, you're going with me. And so I, I put that into that perspective because this is the predicament that the officers are in. And I think today is just the, the time where we're seeing more of this come to a head. And so I think it's our responsibility to really clarify this. The noise ordinance de de deserves much more attention than what it's gotten in the past. Thank you. So we, we just have time for one more brief question. And, and Mr. Mena, you've been very vocal on, on all these issues. So I'll go, I'll go to you with our, with our last question. Um, a lot of people here obviously initially had no idea that any of this was going on. They, they, they come to Wynwood, they see the art, they maybe go out to the clubs and, and they're not really familiar with the politics. How can they help? What, what, should, they, what should they be advocating for on an individual level? Like what exactly needs to change and how can they how can they help okay so just to give you some background you know my investment in Miami is the long term not the short term because you mentioned the SAP mr. mayor we don't have one residential in the SAP because why it's great to bring business Miami has plenty of residential but people don't have income there is nothing that really hurts me more when somebody asks, come, tell me, Moshe, you have a job for me? It's painful for me because I know they finished school, they did what they were asked to do, and to see them doing waitressing job, just because of bartending, this is painful for me. So, I'm sorry? They make good money too, though. I know they make money good, but how long it can last? So the idea was that we put the 45 acres that mainly to create business, and that's where we came with the Asia Latino until this administration screwed it up. But we are going to, but we are going to continue with our vision. It's just taking time. It's just like we had, you know, this is a, how they call it on the road when you have a bump on the road. Okay, we'll fix it. So meanwhile, we get activated other areas just to make it happy and interesting and bring more people and thousands of people will bring in here. The other issue, and I'm gonna get into the other issues that I want to, Mr. Mayor to deal with you, I mean to deal with your city. So the vision was to create the global trade hub because the future of America, I totally believe embedded in Latin America, 700 million people, 300 million people, we're sitting right in the middle of this, 1 billion people economy. And if we cannot capitalize on it, we're stupid. So we started with the whole global trade hub, bring the East, Latin America into one ecosystem. And then we went to downtown Miami, we bought 60 building to make it the Silicon Valley of Latin America. I didn't buy building just to keep them. It's a very, very complicated business plan. It takes time to execute. 
because it includes governments of Latin America, governments from the Far East, government of the Middle East. It's not like a building condo it and sell it. It's a very multi-layer, getting the schools involved, private business, government, so it's taking some time. And we are doing it on a daily basis. So now when I'm coming to Miami, when I say this is my investment in Miami for the long term, Mr. Mayor, when we started this movement, I wanted to put a couple of things on the agenda also. It cannot be that every business that's open in Wynwood, a restaurant or a bar or anything, is always one year or she is always one year behind schedule. They have to have 30 visits to get okay. So the bureaucracy in the city has to be at that point. Then we have the impact fees. One of the owners, he told me I needed to sell my car. He has a great place here. He has a great restaurant, bar. I love to go there all the time. But he told me for the impact fee, I needed to sell my car. The impact fee is really so outdated and it's really become like a negotiation thing about how much I have to pay to have a bar or to have a business in here. So there's a couple of other issues we need to do, and I'm sure there is, will be many more others. But this is the time that we can really say, this is our city, this is our home, how do we want to build it? It cannot be, it's always be entertainment. There is a limit how many bars we can do, how many restaurants, how many galleries. We need business. We need to encourage business to be business friendly. I've done many businesses in many other cities. I built in other cities. This is the toughest place to be, absolutely. So this is where I'm standing up and I'm trying to make a change. And unfortunately, some people, when they cannot answer the facts, they attack you personally. Because if I had done this noise or 11 o'clock after 11 o'clock noise regulations in our ecosystem, they would close everybody, everybody move over here. But it's not, it's about Wynwood. It's about Miami, South Florida. Bravo. So I'm not thinking about myself only. Because, and I'm going to finish here. I always tell people, closing your door doesn't make your home safe. Throwing your garbage through the windows doesn't make your home clean. We're living part of ecosystem and we need to protect this ecosystem. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you guys so much for coming in. And, and I just want to say one thing, you know, uh, Politicians and public servants get, get a bad rap often for, for kind of dodging things. We have some tough questions today, and everyone up here gave, gave a really good attempt to, to really go to the issue. Thank you, guys so much for that. Thank you all so much for coming to see our stuff on SaveWinwood.org, and you'll hear more from us for sure. Thank you all so much. Can't sell your soul I dream